my name is Kristen Klein, and today I'm going to be presenting to you the marketing plan that I prepared for Steinhoffels. So just a recap of what we're going to be going over today, I'm going to start out with a brief introduction of the company, move into the situation or analysis and the SWOT analysis, and then go into the marketing plan while I'll be talking about objectives, the target market, distribution promotion. Following that, we'll have the financial analysis, and lastly, the monitors and controls to see how we're going to measure the success of this marketing plan. So a little bit about Steinhoffels. They were opened in 1934, so quite a while back. Um, they were opened in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and it was originally Mueller Steinhoffel. I talked to Gary Steinhoffel, who's one of the current owners, and he noted that it was really hard for his family to get this um, company started when he began because it was toward the end of the Great Depression. So many people didn't have a lot of money to spend on disposable income items like furniture. Um, but nonetheless, they um, powered through, and now they're a third-generation family-owned company. So they have seven dif 17 different locations and in both Wisconsin and Illinois and they employ over 700 people with the opportunity to expand in the future, which I'll be talking about just shortly here. And they're also the number one retailer in the furniture and mattress industry in all of Wisconsin. Um, last year they had $180 million in sales. So just a brief little timeline here, some of the expansions that they've done. In 1959, they changed from Mueller Steinhoffel to just Steinhoffel and built a 40,000 square foot store in Milwaukee as well. Then in 2002, they built a 420,000 square foot store, um, which is now the headquarters. That's in Waukesha, Wisconsin. So the warehouse, um, the corporate office, and our largest store is all housed there. And then in 2014, definitely the most bold move was made when we decided to acquire three of the American Furniture buildings. So American Furniture, American TV went out of um, business a few years back and we were able to buy three of those buildings for $12.75 million and allocated another $30 million for renovation. And the first of those three stores will actually be opening up in 2017. So the cause for concern here, we're gonna be focusing just on the Madison West location. Um, what's, what's the issue here is there's quite a bit of competition, very compact to us. So within a five mile radius, we have seven direct competitors which makes it very difficult to be able to close um, our customers because they have the ability to shop around and, and see what the best value is. Um, but the major kind of concern we have is these companies are um, advertising a lot of their services as free. So for example, they'll have free interior design services available and free delivery, um, when in reality nothing is really free. They're just kind of allocating those costs into things like their furniture. So for example, Ashley Furniture and Steinhoffels are very similarly priced um, as far as their range, um, but Steinhoffels has quite a bit better quality furniture, so our margins are a lot less, um, but that furniture is gonna last you a lot longer over the years. But when people tend to hear free delivery and things like that, they automatically thinking that they're getting a better value. So it's kind of important through this marketing campaign that we um, really inform them and let them know that we have a really high quality product and that this would be their best value. So briefly talking about the industry, um, the U.S. furniture stores industry is a $59 billion with an annual growth rate of 2.7%. It's highly fragmented, which means no one company owns majority of the market. Ashley Furniture is actually number two in the market and they only own 6.3% of the market share. Um, consumer confidence index, per capita disposable income, and home ownership are the three major factors um, that goes into buying habits in the industry itself. So here I just kind of wanted to make note of the major market segmentation. So what we have going on here, it kind of divides out the different age groups and what percentage of the market that they make up. So what's notable here is only 4% of the entire business of furniture store sales come from businesses. So majority, 96% are all coming from individuals and households, so we're in a really good place being a B2C market because a lot of individuals are coming to these stores right now to, to purchase from us. The company analysis. So Madison was the second highest in sales at just under $50 million this past year. Um, it has 72 employees and it's the trial location. And this is what's really unique about Madison is um, the corporate's able to kind of use Madison as 
a guinea pig for some of their ideas. And if it does well or if it doesn't do well, they'll determine if they want to expand that to other stores in the company. So for example, we're doing a Shipping Plus trial right now. Um, so on top of the normal, if you live in the Madison area, your normal shipping would be and delivery would be 109. Um, but we have the option available for a Shipping Plus, which is a $29 option. Um, it's one Steinhoffel's employee brings it to your door in a box. There's no, there's no assembly on our end and we don't bring it in. It's kind of all on your end once it's home, but a lot of people are opting for that option for cost savings. Um, and it's actually doing a lot better for us too. So that's probably in the near future something we're going to be adding on to different stores. So taking a similar approach with the Decorating Solutions program, we're going to be testing it out in the Madison area for one year. Um, looking at our numbers quarterly and then if that's doing well, if we expect to do what we want to do, then we're going to um, implement, that, implement that into other stores as well. So some of the strengths that Steinhoffels has, it's a very reputable brand. People come to us because they know that their furniture is not going to fall apart in just a year or two. Um, like I said, we're the number one um, retailer for furniture and mattress in all of Wisconsin, beating some of those um, nationally known companies like Ashley. Um, Madison is the second highest producing store company-wide, so there's a lot of traffic, a lot of sales going through that location. Um, it's highly populated and growing area, so not just Madison itself, but all of the suburbs are growing at such an exponential rate. There's tons of houses being built and a, a lot of um, new home market area for us to furnish people's homes. Some of the weaknesses are the high amount of competition, which I mentioned earlier. Um, there's not a large amount of social media engagement, so although we have quite a few followers on Instagram, we're not engaging with them, especially after the target demographic that we're going to go after. Um, so we want to increase that a little bit more. And we also have a low millennial demographic, so we want to bring a little bit more millennials into this, this purchasing, purchasing habits and having it be a fun experience for them. Some opportunities we have. Interior designing is trending right now tremendously. So HGTV is a, a very popular channel that a lot of people are watching. Um, Fixer Upper is number one right now, and the Magnolia Homes company that Fixer Upper has is um, actually at our store. We're the only company in the region that can sell that um, line for the next year. So a lot of people are coming in wanting that Magnolia line because they watch it on TV, they love her style and her furniture. So that's really been a very good, strong selling point for us and able to build those tickets really nicely with things like accessories. Um, we're going to utilize more technology because with our target that we're going after, um, they grew up with technology. So we want to implement that more with our designers, make it more interactive so that they can really be impressed because the technology and technology in the furniture industry is just very lagged behind most industries. So to be a leader in that would really give us an upper hand. Um, and advertising decorating solutions. So we're going to work on really pushing the decorating solutions um, packages to people, especially in our target mar market, which I'll get to soon. Um, some threats is that they're not ready to buy high quality furniture quite yet. They're okay with buying um, lower end furniture for just a couple years until they kind of get on their feet. Um, free services definitely kind of put us at a disadvantage because people just aren't informed um, about the option of free. Um, and then the economy has a direct relation with the furniture industry. So if the economy is not going bad, the home market, um, furniture, definitely they all play together. So our marketing objectives for this marketing plan, the first is going to be to create brand awareness through the Decorating Solutions program. Second is to increase the enrollment rate into the program by 28%. And lastly is to generate at least $100,000 extra in sales over the course of the year. So the target market, we're going to go after homeowners in the Madison and surrounding areas between the ages of 27 and 36. So this accounts for about 25% of the industry. So these are all of our, our new homeowners that are either building new construction, just got their own home, they're ready to get rid of those hand-me-downs and the, the low quality furniture and kind of upgrade. So we're really going to hit that target market hard. Um, and then also as a secondary market, including adults age 22 to 26. They're not going to be buying um, high quality furniture as much, but it's good to keep that in the back of their mind um, so that when they do get to that point, they'll, they'll have us in mind. So distribution and promotion. So we about $67,000 goes into advertising annually in the Madison area alone. 
So quite a bit gets allocated into that. Um, we're going to take 15% of that 67 and use an, an additional 7%, seven percent, seven thousand dollars from corporate, with an additional or with a total of seventeen thousand dollars. So within 12 months of your first home purchase, you'll be able to buy a decorating solutions package for $175. So that's what we're going to kind of advertise as pictured on um, the image to the right here. It's a really good deal and what we kind of want to differentiate ourselves from our competitors is just the relationship you're going to get when you're working with a designer. It's very one-on-one. -on -one. They want to listen to you um, compared to just like that goes together and this goes together and you're on your way. We want it to be a fun experience and for them to kind of feel like they're living through that show and making really the home of their dreams that they've always wanted. So this is where currently our Madison area marketing expenses are going toward. A big chunk of that is in newspaper ads. Um, a large percentage of the 15% that we're taking toward our new marketing plan is going to come from that newspaper area. Just because millennials aren't reading newspaper nearly as much as um, this generation is. The other portion we took away from is radio, and I'll get into that a little bit further. So this is what we're looking at currently. The new budget, like I said, we're going to decrease newspaper and radio and increase social media, online, and website presence. And then this is what our new allocated budget will look like. So a lot more kind of evened out in the pie. A lot more is going into social media, the digital um, end of things, the website. We have a pretty good landing page, so a lot of it's going to be just engaging with social media. Um, having someone there to do that. So currently Madison sells 65 decorating packages per year. With a 20% increase on that, we're going to be selling 18 more packages a year. Um, so the average package normally in a decorating solutions is just under $10,000. So we're going to shoot a little under since these are new homeowners. They're kind of, you know, not on their feet quite yet since they just bought their first home. So we're going to give them about f around $5,500. So if we have that with our 18 more packages, we're going to be just at about $100,000 extra in sales per year. So how are we going to monitor this? Um, we're going to evaluate this quarterly. So an extra four to five packages per quarter will equal the 18 per year. Um, and then the other thing is sales volume. Um, this one's a little more tricky because things like seasons and um, a lot of different factors kind of go into play and can differentiate. So we will look at that quarterly. It should be around $25,000 um, extra in sales per quarter, <clears throat> which will equal out to about 100 in the course of a year. Thank you very much, and I hope you enjoyed.